Um, every three years or so, the conference is taken out of London, which I think is a fantastic idea, to um, one of the various regions of the UK. And this, this year, we're going to go to the southwest, and we're going to be based at Exeter University, where the campus conference facilities are amazing. One of the great things about um, the annual conference is that it brings all kinds of people into the room, uh, geographers of many different descriptions. It's a great place for networking. Uh, it's a great place for having sustained conversations. It's very large, but it's also intimate because it's located in one place. Everybody has lots of opportunities, not only in the formal sessions, but also socially, um, to continue conversations in larger or smaller groups. One of the best things about uh, the annual conference is that major parts of the programme are organised by the study groups. And the energy of those study groups particularly um, the populations of postdocs, early career researchers, graduate students and so on, is absolutely vital to the extraordinary energy that you feel at an annual conference. Uh, the theme that I've chosen is Geographies of the Anthropocene. I've chosen it for a number of reasons. Um, one is that I think it's a, it's a really important topic, a, a topic that um, has all kinds of pressing consequences for our age. Um, not least political, but, but also in terms of science, the science that's coming to the fore. And because I think it's a topic that very much addresses one of geography's great strengths, which is that it brings together natural scientists and social scientists uh, working on, ma on issues that uh, matter in our times. So the Anthropocene is a term that um, has very quickly gained a lot of uh, purchase, not only in scientific circles, but I think in the, in the wider public imagination. Although, technically speaking, it's yet to be formally declared. But the idea of the Anthropocene is that it is uh, a new geologic era um, following the Holocene. And it's an era that is, de is defined as one in which, for the first time in human history, uh, it's human societies and human activities that are seen to be the primary driving force of planetary change. So the notion that human uh, societies and activities uh, are now the largest force shaping the planet, have huge implications for how we might think about managing that, for how various kinds of groupings might want to contest and dispute the way in which planetary management um, might take place, um, the consequences of shifts, for example, in uh, carbon, emissions, carbon emissions and deposits from the global north to the south, uh, all those sorts of issues. So I hope that it's going to be a topic that attracts physical geographers um, as well as human geographers from the whole spectrum of social sciences and humanities scholarship that goes on in human geography. Um, and I hope also that it will attract public interest um, as a topic that very much speaks to some of the most pressing issues of, of our day, notably human-induced environmental change.